you. Senator Coates. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me divert, if I could, just a little bit from what the chosen topic is today. But uh, in response to uh, the question that Congresswoman Maloney asked, what should Congress do? Um, two questions, one for both of you and one for Dr. Taylor. Let me start with Dr. Taylor. Dr. Taylor, um, uh, Dr. Posen's response to that uh, uh, was, the first response to that was that, that the Congress should guarantee the Fed uh, that the Fed will be recapitalized if it makes has losses given its uh, current policies. Would you like to respond to that? I would like to get your take on, on that answer, that question and that answer. No, I don't think that's uh, necessary or appropriate for the Congress to do. They have the, in, in that respect, the Federal Reserve Act is just fine the way it is. They've delegated some responsibility without backstopping the Fed in that particular way. Mm -hmm. uh, my second question is relative to uh, uh, timing, uh, the tools of the Fed uh, versus the uh, tools and the uh, need for Congress uh, to address fiscal policy issues. The um, there's unmistakable, I mean, uh, uh, there's growing consensus, if not full consensus, that uh, the current uh, situation uh, relative to our debt and deficit uh, is such that uh, we are reaching a, a, a tipping point. Uh, the mandatory spending, it's pretty simple arithmetic, is simply running away uh, with uh, uh, our uh, revenues, causing a lot of borrowing, and uh, squeezing uh, the discretionary side of the budget, which we have control over, and which, as Dr. Posen said, there are things that ought to be addressed that may not be addressed simply because uh, we don't have the resources to do so. Now, relative to timing, uh, many are now saying that uh, we've been talking about this for several years, but there has not been significant structural changes uh, proposed uh, or enacted relative to this runaway mandatory spending, uh, and that if it's not done this year, the political process will potentially push this uh, decision to the point where it can be actually accomplished uh, through a political process to 2017. Um, and therefore, I think even the White House has acknowledged, uh, the executive branch has acknowledged along with Congress that it's got to be done now or we flip into a 2014 election year, then we flip into a new presidential election process and it may be 2017. It seems to me two results can happen from that. It's either four more years, muddling through uh, two, four more years uh, of uh, tepid growth, uh, less than satisfactory, high unemployment, a more squeeze on discretionary uh, spending, uh, or we reach that tipping point during this period of time, which brings another financial crisis. Could each of you just briefly address that question and that issue? Well, I'll be very brief. I, I think it's very important to address these budget issues now. It, it is a good time to do it. There's, I see some momentum. There's. Uh, 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 orderly process on the budget is finally coming back. Uh, Senate has a budget. I think the proposal to try to get the budget into balance in uh, 2023 makes sense. That's possible to do with a gradual, it's not austerity, it's a gradual credible plan. But at the same time, as you say, and it's most important for the long term to get the entitlement spending in line with the growth of GDP. They're both exploding. They're, they're exploding and that's, that's the problem. So by all means, that's one of the most important policy issues we're all facing. And the possibility of this tipping point debt to GDP occurring yeah. in that period of time if we don't take action now? Well, I, I think the evidence should make you worry that if you don't address it now, it's going to be harder and there will be, there will be a tipping point. But unfortunately, I can't say what that t t time tipping point will be. We don't know for sure. But there's, why take the risk? It would be better for the economy if we take the action now. So why take the risk? of a tipping point. Thank you. Dr. Posen? Uh, thanks, Senator. The, what's striking, I think, about your, your set of questions and Professor Taylor's response on my issue about backstopping the Fed is that it illustrates how much this conversation is focused on the supposed uncertainty caused by the Fed, whereas everyone's known what the Fed's doing. It's been very clear. They've pre-committed. They've said and there's been enormous uncertainty generated by the budget process between the Congress and the White House. I know none of you deny that and you're trying to fix that. I'm just saying I think it is a very misleading 
statement to talk about the Fed being a cause of uncertainty that harms the economy, whereas the main source of uncertainty, certainly for the last year and a half, has been the obscene budget back and forth between the Congress and the White House. Um, in I that don't, spirit, I, don't disagree with I know you don't. I just want to be clear that right. when we start, if you start saying uncertainty is the is part of a real problem here, that to me is the big source of uncertainty, and therefore I support the responsible budget measures that are going forward. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I want to thank, on behalf of Vice Chairman uh, Klobuchar and myself. And